In this video, we're going to take a look at the truth table module of Logic 2010. So just like when you do any question, find the module that you're supposed to be doing, truth tables, and we'll open it up. So in truth tables, it's just like everything else. You select the question you want to do. So we'll do two questions today. The first one we'll do is 2.001. So these questions actually get you to do full truth table expansions. Uh, and so the first thing we have to do is tell the program what our sentence letters are in the statement we're looking at. So we can see here we're using PQR, so we just type in the sentence letters uh, and hit OK when finished. So there you go. Um, oops. Well. It actually also asks for the number of rows before I click OK, so I better punch that in. Now the number of rows here, uh, it's handy to know that nice theorem. And the theorem says the number of rows is always uh, 2 to the n, where n is the number of atomic letters that you have. So I have atomic letters PQR, so that's three of them. So 2 to the 3 is 8. Uh, and now we can click OK. So Logic 2010 will populate uh, the atomic list here for your truth table. And what you need to do is you need to click each of these question marks and enter in the truth value. Uh, and these would be your eight TVA rows. Now while I'm doing this, I'm just going to explain. Uh, the method that I like to do is I split everything in half. So the first atomic letter splits all eight rows in half, four T's, four F's. Then the next one splits the split. So it's TTFF, TTFF, and so on. And then the last one is always the alternating row. And if you do it this way, um, it'll just sort of work out. Now what happens if I put in uh, a T by accident here? Well, Logic 2010 recognizes that this is a duplicate line entry. So it sort of flags it red, makes a little sound. And so I just change it to uh, the right one, no problem, click OK. Now once I've clicked OK, the program shifts over and what's actually asking me are the uh, TVAs or the rows for each truth table. So I actually have to do each row one at a time. So when I click the question mark, uh, it will sort of populate this. And this is the original sentence that has been parsed out. And we're familiar with how it looks like when it's parsed because we've already done the parsing module. Down here is the full sentence again with the full sort of truth tables. This uh, over here is automatically filled in. So what we need to do is we need to fill in the question marks and the parsing. So what this is saying is, look, if P is true and Q is true, what is the truth value of the conditional P arrow Q? So I just click this. And it'll say, is it true or false? Well, of course, the conditional is true when the antecedent and consequent are both true. So I hit T. And notice it automatically updated down here. So I'll do the same thing over here. It's true. And finally, what is the truth value of the disjunction when a left disjunct is true and the right disjunct is true? Well, of course, it's also true. And then when I'm done, I click OK. Now you have to do these all, so I'm just going to go ahead and sort of cruise through this as quick as I can. Now remember, this is the false case for the conditional, when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false, but the disjunction is still true. Okay. So what happens if I make a mistake? Uh, well, it'll just tell me. It'll make a red sort of mark and make a nice little sound, and then I can just fix it. So of course you can just click randomly uh, to sort of get the answer here right. Um, but that's not really the point. Logic 2010 is a really nice learning tool. Uh, so, you know, you want to take your time with it and make sure that you understand why things are right or why things are wrong. Uh, okay, so we're almost done here. Um, whenever the antecedent is false, the uh, conditional is trivially true. So those are uh, pretty easy in that case. And last one. So those are true, and that's true as well. Now finally, I've filled this all out. And it says, is this formula a tautology? And I just click yes or no. Well, a tautology is something that's always true. According to what I've done, it is always true. So I click yes, and I check it, and it says correct. So I would save and move on. Now, these little check mark boxes here uh, are sometimes used in other questions because they ask, hey, how do you know that this isn't a tautology? And then we would click the offending row, for example. So that's just something that could appear in a different question. Okay, so let's just do one other question here, which sort of demonstrates a couple uh, different aspects of the program, and so we'll do 2.023. Now in this question, uh, it's 
asking if the argument is tautologically valid. Uh, don't, don't worry about the tautologically part. The question is, is this valid? So notice that they've done some of the work for us already. They've already identified that it's PQR, and they've filled in the basic truth table expansion here. So all I need to do is evaluate premise 1, premise 2, premise 3, and the conclusion. Well, the conclusion is just R, so they've filled that in already as well. Okay, so I'm just going to cruise through this. This is nothing special. Uh, here, the, the first premise is just a conditional, so it's pretty much true in all cases, except the time when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false, which is what I just cruised through now. And then the rest is pretty straightforward. Now remember, even though Logic 2010 automates a lot of the stuff for you, uh, you really do need to practice doing this on uh, pen and paper because that's how the test is going to be. Okay, so here we have negation p, so if p is true, negation p is certainly false, then I have negation p as the antecedent, so I move on, and so it sort of just chains around. Again, nothing special here. Uh, so when the antecedent is false, it's always uh, going to make a true uh, conditional. Okay, here we go. And so in a, in a full truth table that you actually do with pen and paper, um, you're going to expand things slightly differently like we've done in class using the columns. Um, but really, the, what this is sort of focusing on is teaching you how to just look at the connective itself and uh, evaluate the connectives. Uh, and if you can do this, well, then the rest of this is easy. Okay, so again, negations make uh, flip the um, truth value, then I have just a regular conditional, so if the antecedent is false, the consequent is false, surely the conditional is true. And I just keep going. So false, true, that's true, true, false. Again, that's the only case where the, uh, I said it, but I clicked the wrong thing, where the actual uh, conditional will be uh, false, which is when we have an antecedent that is true and a consequence that's false. So you notice I'm, you know, I'm just sort of rushing through this, so I'm making a lot of clicking mistakes. It's no big deal. Logic 2010 always tells you uh, if uh, you've done something wrong. So there you go. False, true. Uh, so that's true. Uh, true, false. Uh, so that's the case where the conditional is false. And now we have true, true. And so that's true. Okay. So is the argument valid? Well, for an argument to be valid, I have to find uh, all the cases where all the premises are true. So in the first row, all the premises are true. Same with the second. No, no, same with this row here, and that's it. So row one, two, and five. Those, those are the rows I need to look at. Now, once I look at those, I spot to see what the conclusions are. Well, in row one, the conclusion's true. In row two, the conclusion's false. In row five, the conclusion is true. So valid means whenever the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. So is it valid? No, it's not, because in the second row, the conclusion is false, but all the uh, premises are true. So it is not valid. And then I can even sort of flag to myself, it's this row that's the culprit. So I check, it says correct, I save, and that's it. Okay, so that's how the truth tables work. They're very straightforward. They come in minor variants where sometimes certain things are done for you and sometimes you have to do more, but this is the basics of the system. Good luck.